ABC DVD, Two Brothers Alphabetic Journey through a movie collection that doesn't yield to the man. Man. I'm Noah. I'm Josh. And today we are doing SLC Punk, Salt Lake City Punk. Yep. Um, this is my first time watching it. Yeah. Uh, I'll be up I was like, I, I am at that opinion of I neither dislike nor like. It, it just is. It reminds me of... It, it, this was obviously made for millennials and Gen Xers of the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Of this is what you did when you went to Blockbuster and you wanted to find an edgy movie to show your friends how uh, artsy and out there you are. Uh, well, you're already mentioning Blockbuster, so yeah, that definitely puts it at young Gen X and elder millennial. <laughs> there was a place where we used to rent movies. See, you used to rent cassettes <laughs> and before that DVDs, youngins. You mean after that? Yes. Yeah, yeah, cassettes were before DVDs. This is true. This is how time works. Time is weird and yeah. circular. But yeah, no, uh, this is I, my second or third time viewing it. It's not one I tend to rewatch, but I, I do enjoy the mo movie. Um, it I, is art house. It is art house, it, but it's not like pretentious art house. It's no. just uh, so, uh, just a story uh, that the director wanted to tell. I think it was close to his heart. You know. No, no, I, get, I mean, it's darker than Clerks. Yeah. But funnier than Swingers? Yeah, I don't know. Swingers has it's a, a, it's a different tone. But yeah, Clerks is a good, close example. I mean, it, it is it is a director's vision that, you know, is it, you can tell it's not, you know, a studio house film. Yeah, this, this um, there's a film quote that was sh uh, shoved down my throat at film school by uh, Jean-Luc Godard or Goddard. Uh, he's the uh, one of the fathers of French New Wave cinema, which is full of pretension. It's but French. He, yeah, but uh, his, his quote is, A story needs a beginning, a middle, and an end, but not necessarily in that order. Uh, this movie kind of feels like it took uh, that quote to heart, kind of like Tarantino did the same way. Mm. It's just like, it's all over the place, but worth a watch, I feel. Yep, yep, yep. So, it was released April 16th, 1999. It was first released in Germany in 98, and then it went to Sundance, and Sundance loved it, so yeah. then they got a release theatrically. Yeah. And I'll, I'll put that in big quotes of theatrical yeah, release. Yeah, I mean, it got a limited theatrical release. Uh, it was directed by James Marandino, mm -hmm. whose accolades include SLC Punk 2, Electric <laughs> Boogaloo. <laughs> more punky. More punky. Yeah. Uh, Evil Remains. And Witchcraft 4, The Virgin Heart, which I actually had to look up if that was a porno. <laughs> it sounds like one. And it's not a porno, and I don't know if that makes the title worse, because it's not. <laughs> yeah, and I, I looked up this guy's biography, and he was moved from New York at, like, age six to Salt Lake City and kind of rebelled. So I'm curious if maybe that's why this movie was made. A little biopic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the cast is Matthew Lillard. Love that guy. Back again. Yeah. Uh, he was in Scooby-Doo. He was in Scream and Hackers. Hack the planet, man. Uh, Michael A. Gurgian. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, he's known in Illusion, Forever Young, and Newsies. Yep. Which yep. <laughs> you're like, wow, that is a that, transition. Yeah, well, there's like this and Newsies. Bob, you, you're doing Bob, weird. you're all over the place. Yeah. And Annabeth Gish from Mystic Pizza, Nixon, and Beautiful Girls. Yeah, and I, I'm, I see that she's the third posting, but I would have given it to Jennifer Leon as the more prominent female character in this movie. And I think it is IMDb just pulls the yeah, who, biggest title. And it's like whoever, you know, who... who Who's got the better agent to, to get, get their, their names really. higher? And Jennifer Leon was newer at that point in mm -hmm. Hollywood. Uh, to show the box office, because yes. we do big box office, we do little, little box, box office. office yeah. This box office was $299,569. Oh, didn't even break a million. Mm -mm. Not even, not even 300000 <laughs> I was going to round it up. I'm like, no, I want to do the whole number. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the synopsis. <laughs> In the 1980s, Steve-O and Hera and Bob are the only two dedicated punks in a conservative Salt Lake City. This is a year in their life. Yeah, I mean, this. It, yeah, that's fair. I mean, it's it's their their post college mm -hmm. uh, punks um, and have been punks since high school. Yeah, or even a little bit before. A little that. bit before high school, and it's you know trying to be you know, rebellious in one of the more conservative areas in the United States. Yep. I mean, and the opening, I mean, I wrote down, it just reminds me of Clerks. That's that's what I, there's yep. a few movies from the 
late 90s mm-hmm. that it feels like it's either drawing from or, you know, this is just like the feeling of like, man, our lives are just kind of in a rut or a stationary position yeah. and we're gonna we're gonna show you what our lives are really like yeah it's the slice of life of slackers kind yeah. of thing and uh we get that opening narration of steve-o saying f america mm-hmm. and rednecks and then and it's you know with these nice ethereal credits but then we get the actual opening credits right and i do like the intro that it's it's um punk covers yes and all the all the albums are you know uh, it's showing punk albums but it's actually the actors names that's that was no a, that, that was, was fun cover, i enjoyed you know. that yeah but yeah but i mean it, it starts with like you know we're introducing steve and heroin bob yeah and kind of laying down just the few ground rules of yeah bob hates needles bob don't do drugs yeah bob is is actually straight and narrow for a punk for a punk yeah and you know steve is like the aficionado of all things yeah. punk and anarchy. Yeah, he he's like a gatekeeper yeah. uh, in modern parlance saying, I know what punk is. Mm-hmm. They are not punk enough. They're posers. Right. Yeah. And in the background is their friend Mike, who is the quintessential kind of straight-laced yeah, you, you, person in, but with Jason Siegel. Yeah, playing him, it's it's hilarious. Yes. Uh, you got this, you know, I've got, you know, polos and I'm 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 going to college mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm really nice but also has a punk mean streak he does. Sh- to show that hey you don't have to look the part to be the part right but it is always contrary to what Steve because yeah I, I wrote this later but it's me- worth mentioning now, yeah. for an anarchist yeah Steve has a lot of rules yes. when it comes to what is and what is not punk and who mm. is a poser and who is not and yeah I'll get into we'll that get later. into that later but uh, but we have kind of our first interlude into these kind of flashback stories of you know talking about what happened you know with acid and these rules and yeah. the, this this kind of flashback and it re- reminded me of a story that i heard uh back in college about someone who took acid yeah. um and it, it, it reminded me of this is like you know as it was told to me this person yeah. wanted to do, do three hits of acid mm. and had these three stamps and licked all three stamps but each stamp had like 10 hits on Ooh, it. Oh, so he did 30 hits. He did like 30 hits and went, as the story goes, when they found him, he was on the top of the McDonald's roof screaming that he was a glass of orange juice. <laughs> uh, so when I heard this story uh, in the movie, it's like, you know what? I feel like this was drawn from something. Some, some story real. of the director, yeah. David Sawa, who played Sean as a minor character. Mm-hmm. T- uh, incidentally, you know, Accidentally takes a hundred hits of acid, mm-hmm. but I just love his interaction with the mods, which is like somewhat punk but not quite. Right. And I just love it's like they they have this this uh, f- you know argument against each other, and then afterwards like your mom's still taking us to soccer practice. It's like oh yeah, totally, oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like oh that just that that epitomizes this. We're rebellious, but we're also still within the system. Yeah, we're still kids. We still have yeah. rules that we yeah. are going to abide by. Yeah. But yeah, I know, but this story of acid and getting sent to jail or to a psychiatric, psychiatric hospital. Psychiatric hospital, yeah. Yeah, it's just an interlude because then we go kind of a little bit further of Steve-O having a talk with his parents. Yes. <laughs> with his ridiculous mohawk. Yes. This is like when he was in high school. So it's very hard to keep the timeline straight and you really don't have to. But yeah, he he has uh, his conversation with his dad, who I'll, I always know as Shooter McGavin. Yeah, but uh, you can t- I don't know if it's it touched more with you, but for me, it, it reminded me of dealing with your kids of when they try to lie or when they try to trick you. It's like the, the parents know that this is a phase. Yeah, and they're just just like. It's well, like, we know you're going to get past this. We just want you to do it sooner. And it is funny because, you know, he is rebelling against, you know, society yeah. and the man. And one of the ways you do that is against your parents. But the parents are so understanding. They're yeah. like, what are you rebelling against? I mean, yeah, they want yeah. him to go to college. They and want him to have a good school. And- but they are giving it such a light touch that you're almost like, dude, why are you being yeah. like this? They're not. I mean, this yeah. is the quintessential though, uh, late boomer, early ex parents of. Well, we know, we don't want to be the ones that beat you. We want us like we understand you, honey. We want you to express mm-hmm. yourself, but we want you to also, also have structure. Yeah, but I mean, his his criticism of them is hilarious because yeah. like, guys, 
you you preach love and acceptance like you guys you are divorced, divorced and you it's like no the yeah. the 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 commentary yeah. from him is apt and it is on point and i love that it's like you were hippies but it's like and you sold out it's like i didn't sell out i bought it in son <laughs> it's like it. it's like that's what happens when you grow up <laughs> but then you get this diatribe at the mall about oh. what is a punk and these are posers oh, yeah. and they just wear the clothes yeah. and they just want to you know you know score with the ladies and you know they're it's an yeah. angry, I mean, it's done well. It's like, it's an angry youth speech of like how no one understands us, but when we understand us, we're in. Yeah, and it's it's always uh, a conversation within, when you're within a community of what is like the origin, what is the, what is a true fan. So like for punks, it's like, are you, who started uh, punk? Was it the Sex Pistols? Was it the Ramones? Was it the Velvet Underground? Was it right. the UK, US? You know, for the nerdum, it's like, well, is it Kirk? Is it Picard? Or is it like, you know, some sports thing? There is always this like internal debate that from Who, the outside, you're, it's like, you're all just the same. But from the inside, it's like, no, there, there's, there's this a hierarchy. Is a, this is important. Mm -hmm. you know? But yeah, I mean, this kind of lays the groundwork of what he's operating on of mm -hmm. his rules. Yes. To then switch dramatically yeah. to a concert and oh, mosh pits. Oh, mosh pits. I was in one and I've never been one to be able to, uh, I, I'm a big guy. I've never been able to crowd surf. I'm usually the one to hold people. And I remember one time I was in a mosh pit and it's like, oh, guys, crowd surfing. And he twisted. He just kicked me really hard in the head. And it's with a mosh pit. I wanted to hit the guy, but he was already like carried 20 feet away. Mm -hmm. It's like that mentality of in that group, you just, you're letting those emotions out in, in yeah. your body. Yeah. But then we find out that Mike Jason Siegel yes. is a brawler. Oh, yeah. It's like very. Very similar to, I think, is how I met your mother character. It's like, oh, he's sweet, until he's not. not. Yeah. But it is funny because there's an after party where he's telling the guy, like, hey, I'm, so I, sorry. I'm so sorry I hit you. I hope it didn't ruin your experience here in the States. <laughs> it's like, but but I was the bouncer. This is what I'm supposed to Yeah, but this is, you're supposed to get up on stage and jump off, and you went too far. I'm sorry, man. Mm -hmm. But we also get a uh, really introduction to Jennifer Lynn of Sandy, mm -hmm. who was Bob's minor fling, but then became steve -O's girlfriend of sorts. Yeah. Um, and this is uh, something that I didn't realize on my first viewing is Jennifer Lynn is Kess from Star Trek Voyager. Which I still can't see, even I, if you tell me it's like staring directly at, at her. her. It's like, I don't see it. And this is like between season one and two. So she's young and getting roles, but yep. She, yeah, I can't see it. You can't see it, but it's like she's got range. She can play a one year old alien woman or she could play a 18 year old punk. No person. <laughs> yep. No. But we go from this party to a party for Bob getting out of the hospital. Yeah, because he cut his hand and like got, never got tested and got like the super infection, which was yeah. hilarious. Yeah, and then he's you know been quarantined for like six weeks and he's ready to get out. But it, th this is a stylistic choice, mm -hmm. and I, I know that they're being artsy. He's like mm -hmm. this scene mm -hmm. kind of needs to be further in the beginning of the movie because yeah. we're already like yeah. halfway through. And he's introducing all the characters he's introducing we already all know. the characters. You're like, what, why are we here? You know, we should be... Yeah, we got the omniscient narrator breaking the fourth wall and it's like, oh, here's this person, here's this person. And every time you get a person, you get a random flashback of, oh my God, are we ever going to get out of this party? No, but it, and, and, and we do. And one of the things, a very long scene, yeah. is Mark the German. Yes. He who, mentions laser discs. I know. It's like, <laughs> laser we, we had those. we had those but yeah it's like i feel like you can't have a 90s film without a german nihilist i know i mean it's just it's 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 required it's required yeah, you, know, you got to have, check that box but uh but yeah he's he's got the story he's got a a, a, a gun drawer in the <laughs> yeah and this is a, a hint at steve's not so badassness of he very shies away from guns mm -hmm. saying i don't like those things very seeing the real him Right, and it, it, you know, there's this. Lo I mean, it is Tarantino where there's like yeah. there's this airplane story about his parents, parents. and you're like, where are we going? Yeah, with it's this? Tarantino. As I also got like the uh, thought of like the gremlins of wow, this is a dark story coming out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. To then, you know, ending off with a Salt Lake City joke of the car floating in the water. <laughs> it's like, why is it floating? I was like, well, it's salt. salt. It's very buoyant. It's like, God, I hate this place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so then we go to another story of how do you get beer in Utah? Because beer, oh, for the most part, is very outlaw. Or it's it's not outlaw. It's very regulated. Yeah, it's very hard you to, have get, to get You know, they, they do a good job. It's like you have to get it in clubs or, yeah. or state-run liquor stores. And it's not just liquor. I remember when driving... Uh, to college and going through Utah, it's like 
just to get a soda was a pain in the butt because caffeine was also highly regulated because right. of the Church of Latter-day Saints or the Mormons uh, having more control than they should. But there's this whole story of, you know, yeah. you have to drive all the way to Wyoming yeah, to get beer. To get to beer. It kind of reminded me of stories of you going to Canada to get beer. But, That's true. But that wasn't regulation. That was just price. Well, that was price. But also, it's like if we drove over to the Montreal side, it was 18. Yeah, yeah. But when we got older, it's like it was cheaper to go to the duty-free shop mm-hmm. and meet the nice Canadian ladies. Yeah. Who were these sweet old ladies in the shirt. Like, oh, would you like a punch card? Yeah. I mean... But I did. I uh, for us as Coloradans, I also enjoyed that the liquor store also show uh, sold fireworks. Mm-hmm. And I, that was always the joke during uh, periods when Colorado wouldn't allow fireworks. You would oh well, just go to Wyoming and grab some stuff that's illegal and bring it back down. You do yeah. like your, your your fireworks running. Yeah, Wyoming. If it's illegal in your state, come here. Yeah. <laughs> But it's like, no, I like the excuse of we're English. And they're like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it's like, oh, yeah, we, we don't see your type around here. Yeah. And also, it's an important message. It was true in the 90s. It's true now. Beating Nazis is good. Yeah, no, if you if you, you see, see a Nazi, Nazi, you punch him in the face. I don't think you should get in trouble. No. <laughs> yeah, if, they, if they failed the Nazi test, go for it. Yeah. It also establishes uh, pre- here is that um, he, uh, that Steve-O... When through college did his pre law, he he got like nearly a four zero. Yeah, know? and he he claims, oh, I cheated. No, you didn't. didn't. You he, really did try. Yeah, you know, it's, it, you're starting to see the cracks in the uh, persona he's he's showing. Mm-hmm. Well, and and it is a, a sweet moment because like he 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 hooks up with his dad, who takes him to yeah. lunch at a very fancy place. Is no, he has a good relationship with his yeah. dad. They like to argue because yeah. his father is a lawyer, and he's like, "You're going to be a good yeah. lawyer. Why? Because you like to argue a point, even if you yeah. know that point is, you know, asinine. I mean, like saying, like, I'm a Nazi, but I'm from Jewish descent. Yeah, yeah, it's like you just want to argue, and that's what you know makes a, lawyer, a good lawyer. Yeah. And and you see the joy in his face, where it's like, oh, you're rebellious. Like, you want to go get lunch? It's like, yeah, yeah, I do. Dad's going to buy me lunch. Gonna that's kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, to have we're going to have like a train spotting scene of yeah. when he's with his girlfriend and dropping yeah. acid in the park. Yeah. And just, this is where a lot of the art house comes out. I was like, mm-hmm. it's like, what is going on? And then to the, just the blatant use of, uh, uh, Terminator two. Oh yeah. The, the, the nuclear bomb scene from Terminator two. I was like, Oh, you, you know, everything's connected and things are going to get destroyed, man. You know, it's like, I've had too many stoner conversations to say, <laughs> this is a stoner conversation with, with acid instead, but mm-hmm. you know. and you know, we 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 get to another party, and Steve O has been calling everyone a poser because yeah. they're not doing it. But yeah, <laughs> I had to laugh because it reminded me of you mm. of tall people going down short staircases. Oh, yeah, I, I remember head. the same thing. It's like you gotta tilt your head. It's like it sucks, man. Some some houses are not built for you. And I do love the conversation he has with Brandy because mm-hmm. she's a fine girl. She's a fine girl, and what a girl good wife she would be to Steve O. But that argument of Steve-O has these, this uniform, these rules for anarchy, and mm-hmm. the whole point of anarchy is not to have rules, and is He's it in a itself rules. A, a form of control? And he's and you see Steve-O trying to like fight against that, but he's starting to take that in. Mm-hmm. Well, and you see it also because you know Sandy hooks up with someone else, and yeah. he's really mad about it. Yeah. But it's like. But that goes against his, his rules, rules, especially the rules in their relationship of you can be with anyone of like. Except you, you can't be with everyone I, because I, it hurts my feelings. Yeah. Uh, there's the Mike story, which I really feel should have been put in a different place of mm. showing he's got anger issues. Like, yeah, we we we, we, we got that. that. Yeah. So this story just feels like we're we're padding this. Yeah, no, that's like it needs to be a certain length. He he broke some windshields, but he's he's also going to go to college. You yeah. Know? And they they keep saying like fighting has no point, but we're gonna show all these fights because we can, you know. Mm-hmm. And we also learn that Steve-O gets into Harvard Law because of his dad, and and that you know it's like his life is set. Mm-hmm. And you know, in between that, we find out that Bob's dad is crazy, and yeah. Bob has not had a great life growing up. And you know, Bob is probably a little more stable knowing his past, which I mean they do mention in the in mm-hmm. the movie. Yeah, but that you know, Bob. Mm-hmm had a crappy life growing up and he's doing pretty good. Yeah. Steve-O had a, a great life great and life, and he's just rebelling against just, nothing. Just for, you know, it's the rebel without a cause. He, he, he's just doing it because it's what you do. Yeah. And then we get the final party, mm-hmm. you know, um, Steve-O has love at first sight, which, yeah, for Brandy, yeah. which doesn't go anywhere. No, they, they have this kind of talk. It hints that it might, but I, 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 I don't, but for the purpose of this movie, it goes it nowhere. nowhere. Yeah. 
Uh, you know, it, it, it is a good quote mm. from Brandy saying, you know, rebellion is in the mind. Yeah. You don't have to show it. Yeah. As long as you... It, it's very much like the clothes don't make the man, yeah. you know. Yeah, you could... You can be a rebel by being in the system, yeah, too. Yeah, it's like you can take it down from the inside. You can change it. You can just say, I have to have a job to get food, but I'm not going to, you know, do what you want, man. Exactly. Yeah. And then, you know, Bob ruins a perfectly good party by smashing yeah. your glass. But Bob also... is. A, this is the scene where everyone breaks yeah. their rules. Yes. Bob takes drugs. I mean, he, he he does try to say, what is this? It's like, oh, no, it's fine, it's fine. But, because but he breaks his rule. He breaks his rule. He takes something he doesn't know. Yeah. He doesn't know. And ultimately, that kills him. Yeah, the man who's afraid of drugs and needles dies of an overdose because of his drinking and this random you know amount of drugs that he took. Right, and you know, you, you get the funeral of, you know, um... Well, I mean, before the funeral, I mean, we we get the that Steve finds him this this very emotional death scene. That is true. That is uh, kind of ties back to the beginning of Steve uh, that Bob always likes to ste- uh, sleep in, and Steve has to wake him up, and this time he can't. Mm-hmm. And this is apparently was a very hard scene for Matthew Lillard to film. He asked for a closed set, which is usually reserved for uh, nude scenes. Mm. So that means like we got the bare minimum of, of people on the set, so he could be in the moment. And he said he drew from the recent loss of his father, like mm. that he wasn't mm-hmm. ready. And you can see that this is a genuinely no. It, this is like oh no no no. This is not just you being in a stupid movie. You're you're gonna act your your socks off here. No no, and I think it. it is he definitely pulls the range, yeah. and the director does give him a lot of time to kind of mm-hmm. pull a lot of emotions where you're screaming, you calm down, you scream, yeah. you calm down, and yeah. just let him live in the moment. Yeah, you you get those of I'm not ready for this. Uh, what's going to happen? I'm sorry. No, no, no. Please. Yeah. You, know, you get all the stages. You get all the stages, yeah. and you get to the funeral, and Steve-O has shaved his head. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he's basically saying like, "No, I, I've, I'm giving up on not necessarily being a punk, but it's like, but I am." ready to accept my next stage of life. And we get that because we get the uh, a flashback, which would be the beginning of this movie, of the origin of their punk phase. Mm-hmm. When there are kids. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I find it funny because mm. on some level, it, this is where the rules are established, but they are yeah. going against the rules. He's like, they are posers. They just want to put the clothes on to well, get the girls and go to parties. Yeah, and, and it's that uh, I think it's apt that they were playing D&D, which, you know, would have gotten them in the satanic panic in Salt Lake City. True. Uh, so they they are rebelling against the nature of their area, but he's basically creating a D and D character of I'm a punk you know bar ro- you know plus <laughs> I'm three, a punk level five, five you know. Uh, but he wants to stay with Bob. Bob is like his only friend. So yeah. if Bob's going to be a punk, I'm going to be a punk. And, and Bob's mean, rebelling because his dad's you know caught. Right. Bob it comes back to Bob has always been the honest one. Yeah. Of you no, know, Bob was a punk. Yeah. And he brought his friend along. And it, there's kind of like this heartbreaking feeling of mm. like, oh, you guys could have just, I mean, not that you could have had like a Cody Fingers better mm. life, but it's like, but you're just doing great. You yeah. didn't have, you know, Steve-O didn't have to yeah, you, go down this road. He could have been like Mike of, yeah, no, you could have been a punk and I could have still been me and still gone to these parties, enjoyed the music, but I bought in too hard. You, yeah, he completely took it and yeah. was like, well, I'm not a poser. You're yeah. a poser. Everyone's a poser. a poser. But then we get like, I'm going to go to Harvard. I'm going to, you know, argue... I'm gonna be a you know pain in the ass to the judges. But, you know, still have that punk nature, which is fine. Which I mean, is it, fine, but uh, he admits to himself and is like, and to the audience, like you might have noticed this from the beginning, but I was posing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was a poser, and yeah. yeah, and it's that either that growing up or being true to yourself of, you know, you don't have to be just one thing. No, and it is like I said at the beginning, like this is the movie that <laughs> I mean, talk about mm-hmm. art imitating life. Yeah. Is, I did go through a phase in high school mm. where me and my friends would go find the most abstract mm-hmm. movie that we could find at Blockbuster that was, you know, <laughs> that we could rent. It's like, yeah. I remember watching Secretary or mm. the original Crash. Yeah, no. Uh, not, not the Brendan Fraser one. Not the- this, this is one about the James Dean uh, sycophants who want to yeah. recreate. It's like, these are weird yeah. movies. And we would only watch for movies because it made us feel adult and cool. Yeah, was, and this would fall into it. And I think there is something said, like, listen, when you're young and you're trying to find that identity, is you do grasp onto things that mm-hmm. 
may not be you, but you want to be accepted in a mm-hmm. community and you want to hold on to those rules and you want your friends to like you for the person you are, but also the person you created. Yeah. So it is a good film in that respect. It is. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad I watch it. Um, this is definitely a you have to know the person you're going to suggest it to kind of film. It's yes. not just for everyone. No. Because otherwise people are going, this is destroyed to, this is weird, this is very 90s. It's very art, art house. house. If you have an art house friend yeah. who would kind of revel in the historical yeah. style of the late yeah. 90s yeah. Yeah. And, a, and a director's attempt to kind of make an mm. art house film, yeah. that's this. Otherwise, well, like I said, an enjoyable art house film because you know, when I hear art house film, I'm like dog more French New Wave where it's like black and white and people but no, this is more of this is like Clerks this is like Clerks if yeah. someone likes Clerk they might like this yes. say like listen it's not as funny as Clerks yeah I mean but, you know like uh, Empire Records or things like that you know but more yeah. you know handheld camera yeah. style yeah and it's like and that's not bad but it's like I think you could get a lot just like if you could find a YouTube summary or reading the Wikipedia yeah. I think it's just as fine yeah um, but it is on HBO right now. If yeah. you're like, oh, well, I've listened to your Cliff Notes version. Uh, maybe. Me, uh, oh, it's, no, it's not that long of a movie, so it's it's not that big of a commitment. No. But, no. you know, hopefully you watched it. If not, you know, uh, that's okay. It, 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 is, it is its own thing. It's loud. It's mm-hmm. in your face. Mm-hmm. Uh, not like our next film that is a whisper and very much reserved. Yes, this is another art house film, but more on the retrospective internal uh, feeling. So you have to take shelter, you know, mm-hmm. uh, to understand. Yeah, this is uh, the Michael Shannon uh, film, Take Shelter. Take Shelter, 2011. Another film I have yet to see, but Josh this, recommends it highly. I mean, th- again, this is for the right people. This one is definitely one I got as a suggestion in film school from a film school friend. And I went, oh, no, this one this one wasn't awful. This one was actually a, f- I wouldn't say fun movie, but a good movie. Oh, you're going to make me watch something that makes me get the feelings. You've got to have some feelings. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well... You know, from punk to feelings, yeah. you know, we've gone it all. Yep. So take shelter next week, this week, punks. So we'll catch you later. Bye. Bye. No, I didn't have a mohawk. I didn't hear Well, we didn't have reason to rebel. No, but I did buzz my head because I hated my curls. Well, you hated your curls. That, that, that was a rebellion. That was just lack of wanting to comb your hair. That's true. I, hate I tried head. buzzing my head, and I went, oh. You my have head lo- is you, lumpy. You, you have leukemia, don't you? <laughs> I'm a lumpy head. It's like, let's not do that. I just, you know, I fear the day when I go full Picard bar- bald. You just sneeze. You just sneeze all, all hair. Poof, like, like a, a dandelion. dandelion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.